That was a bit of clickbait for YouTube. I'm not gonna tell you how to become a farmer. I'm gonna tell you how I became a farmer. I was gonna do a completely different YouTube video and then I realized you guys must be like, why have you got so many different breeds of sheep? What's going on? Even Zoe's copped a fair bit of flack from the farming the right way brigade about sheep farming and the sheep we've got and stuff like that. So I thought I'd do a quick YouTube on how we became farmers, like our little story, why we've got the sheep we've got, and all that sort of stuff, so you can kind of understand where we come from, why we're doing the things we're doing, and then it might make a little bit more sense to you. Does that make sense? So, uh, buckle up for the life story. If you think it's mental, you think it's mental. Indeed. You're gonna get the sheep in. That is one handy spaniel. Well done dog, good dog, up in, up, up. That thing, that thing is feral. Shit. No, no, don't do that sheep thing. That is a mistake. Go on, go on, just do as you're told. Go on. Should have probably thought about this. Shouldn't I? Helps if you plan what you're gonna do before you start fucking about with them. See ya. Really? Really? Oh look, she's made it into next field now. Woo, woo, woo. So uh, when I when I was born, <laughs> so I was born on a sheep farm. My dad was a big sheep farmer, and my mum and dad had split, and then uh, he died when I was twelve and uh, so I had to go and live with my mum. I went off in my early years um, to, around London and was a plumber. Long story short, I got very unwell and um, I couldn't go back to fitting boilers in South East London anymore. So um, I started farming again. And um, we started from literally nothing. We didn't have um, even a sheep hurdle, even one of these. Like, we didn't have a trough. We didn't have anything at all, genuinely. When you start out 
from nothing. It's very, very hard to get going because um, sheep are expensive. Um, you don't have land. Um, the land that you do get, you have to take all the crap little bits that no one else wants. And it takes a lot of time. It takes a long time to build up and build up and build up. And without a sideline or, um, you know, someone financing it, it, it's a very, very tough job to do. And um, we've come under a, a bit of stick from um, just a few entitled people, really, um, sort of bitching about our sheep. Um, there they are. You can see we have a mixture. Um, because genuinely, we just buy stuff that's cheap that we can make money on. So, um, like my little black ewes, you can pay five or ten quid for them. Um, but they'll still have a 50 or 60 pound lamb. Um, you see in my last YouTube, we got them out to 91 quid this year. Um, all from little, little sheep like that. So, um, yeah, that's sort of our business model. We just try and buy stuff. So we buy coal use, so we end up with um, everyone else's rejects, really. We end up with people that kick, kick stuff out of their flock for lameness. They might prolapse a little bit or not have enough teeth or not be right for their farm or have a bad lambing. Anything people people fine tune their flocks when they get um, you know which we will in in a few years when we're um, a little bit financially better off um, and we're in better stead with our uh, farming we will um, be fine tuning our sort of stuff so I just wanted to sort of ex explain that to you because it, it's really hard like uh, obviously because we, we we share a lot online and um, when when people sort of I don't know um, don't understand where we've come from. And don't understand why we've got sheep that look like that that aren't all uniformed and perfect and that sort of stuff. So I've just given you a brief outline of what we do. When people say to you that you need to retain your ewe lambs to breed from. Now, this was never really an option in my mind. Um, whether it's right or wrong, I'm not, I don't know, who am I to judge? But this is just what we've done. Um, for us to retain ewe lambs means that <laughs> that that lamb is always going to be worth more than you can buy a sheep for so I could and, and you can't really breed from them unless they're the better ones you can't always breed from them um, especially if you've got land like us you can't you can't breed from them on the first year I laugh because we've done that this year we've tucked some ewe lambs but I'll tell you about that later um, so we've never retained ewe, ewe lambs because I can always get 100 quid for lambs give or take and I can always buy you for 40 quid give or take so I can buy a breeding sheep two breeding sheep to one lamb basically sheep um so that was that reason so we've never done that and we've never been in a position to have land either because you've obviously got to run them dry for a year so you've got so you've got a sheep there costing you money that's not um making you money and we've never been in a position where we can afford to have sheep running about because we haven't got enough land or enough money to tie up for that long so it's one of them and, and then you can you can keep that lamb you, you know you end up with that sheep being 18 months old two years old and then it not ever getting lamb it could be a geld so you could have been wasting your time for all that time when you could have she'd never be worth what she was worth when she was a lamb so that was our reasoning behind it you see we've just never been in a position to be able to keep you lambs really one or two or three or four or something like that but nothing like you know serious to like start building a flock like a closed flock so um just for people that sort of judge us on that, that's our reasoning, you know, there's there's reasoning behind it. My phone's ringing. That was the other thing, I spend my life on the phone. Um, so yeah, that was our reasoning behind not, not like doing that. And also, some of the sheep you can buy, so the way we do it is um, we buy cull ewes in. So like, not the black ones, but the older sheep there. And um, we lamb them, uh, we get a lamb out of them, and then we fatten, fatten the lamb and fatten the ewe that year. So we, every year we buy in new ewes, we, we'll buy a pen of sheep and we'll pull out all the bad bags and ones that are a bit leaner and we'll fatten them on turnips that winter and all the others we'll tuck, we'll lamb them and then that following winter they'll be the sheep that we put on our turnips and graze and fatten. This year might be a bit interesting because we bought a lot of hill ewes which brings me on to the next bit. So cull ewes uh, have been very very expensive this year. We lamb completely outdoors on really rough land. This year's collection of sheep um, there's a lot of hill ewes in these. These come out of a auction up north. Um, we're right down in the south, and we got like Scotch Blacks and um, <laughs> we got a couple of Herdwicks and Swaledales and bits in between, basically. And it left us like, what do we, what tup do we put to these? So um, my favourite sheep's a North Country Mule, which is basically 
Swaledale, Cross of Blue Face Leicester. So we've got a lot of Swaledale, so I thought, well, let's try and breed our own mules. But the problem with mules is the weathers aren't worth a lot. The boy sheep, the, the ewe lambs are worth a lot, but the, but, but the boys aren't. And my other problem is, it, to be able to get a decent mule, you've got to spend the money on a decent ram. And we weren't going to do that. Um, some of those Blue Face Leicester rams, they get to some serious money. So um, that wasn't really an option for us, I just thought... Mm. So um, we've got this lady I bought my first ever rams off. We bought these. They're called Bluebells. They're, um, they're Blue Face Leicester Cross Beltex. And they're a lot more sort of compact. And um, as you can see, look, he's got a bit of shape about him. This guy's a better one, look. He's got a bit more of a like muley type fleece. Well, I bought three of them. Come on. Fuck it. And we run them basically with these. So hopefully they're going to produce some real nice ewe lambs and they're going to be the future to our, our sheep flock. I will show you quickly why we want those sort of things because about four years ago we bought some sheep. Um, someone bought, bought them and sold them to me at Hereford Market and they're like um, they're like Easy Care or Dorper cross um, Scotch Blacks and they've been the most fantastic sheep in the world. Yeah, I'll show you some of them. This is exactly the sort of sheep we want to try and breed. But um, they just suit our system, really low input. Always have a couple of lambs, just perfect. So yeah, I hope that sort of builds you a little picture about um, why we farm sheep the way we are. It's never been, it's always been a financial decision. Um, I can't see the point in going out and spending this year, tags, you tags were 180, 200 pound for a sheep that might not get in lamb, um, that straight away the very next year, she's gonna wear 50, 60 quid less. Uh, I just, for me, I haven't been in a financial position to be able to do that. Yeah, so, you know, that's that's just our, our reasoning. So hopefully you get a sort of idea of what we're doing and we're, what we're about. We, we genuinely have started with nothing, like no inputs at all. And it's not the easiest thing to do. So, you know, people get very sheep snobby and a bit judgy about stuff. Well, just, I know this is all well and good me saying all this as well when I'm just standing in front of a brand new Prattly and shiny as fuck. But, um, you know, this was because of a grant. We got we got this we got this practically for a grant, and we wouldn't have got one of these for like another four years, probably three or four years. Stuff that shits and not shines. That's been the motto. Like you got to buy stuff that makes you money. You can't just buy fancy gadgets um, when you can use those hurdles. Here are some ewe lambs that we bought. We decided to top a bunch of ewe lambs this year because the ewe lambs were the same price as coal ewes, so. It just made sense to have a go with ewe lambs this year because they've got their whole life in front of them. The coal ewes have only got one more year in them really. So that is the reason behind that. Now, a lot of people say don't tuck ewe lambs because they don't grow big enough. They have trouble, blah, blah, blah. All that sort of stuff. Now this was kind of like a educated gamble. Um, I might be being completely naive, but we've tucked a few ewe lambs before. We've bought some lambs that are in lamb at the market and stuff like that that shouldn't have been. And they've always grown into plenty big enough sheep for us. So it's an educated gamble. And uh, I'm actually really excited to see what they throw. Really nice bunch of sheep. Really nice bunch of sheep. Some of them are our own bred ones actually. And then there's some others that we brought in. So yeah, the funny story behind the mule lambs, I actually met a Cumbrian farmer in East Sussex at a barbecue. got absolutely wankered with him, drank a load of cider, a whole bottle of gin, all the rest of it, ended up doing a deal and buying a load of his ewe lambs. And look, here they are, in lamb. That's how you should do business. Um, it's a true story though. So yeah, I'm really excited to see how they get on. Um, probably gonna have loads of C-sections, be really, really upset, and uh, completely regret my decision. But that is, uh, I don't know, just stay tuned. I'll show you, I'll show you the whole way through. The important thing is um, that the majority of scanned in lambs are singles, uh, black dot on their back is a single, purple is a twin. That's really vital because if they're rearing two lambs, it might be a bit much from a bit, a bit hard on our not very good land. So um, the fact that they've only got one, a lot of them have only got one, is just perfect. 
if they've got two, we'll probably think about taking one away um, because otherwise we just don't want it, you know, pulling the life out of the ewe and herds, putting everything into rearing them and then just being knackered by the end of it. So it's just going to be a bit of a finely thing to balance, but on the whole, really happy we went down this route. I've just got them into sort of belly and dag them a little bit, um, mainly because because they're ewe lambs, they're going to obviously be a bit skittish around their lambs and the lambs are gonna want a little bit of help to find a teat, so I'm just gonna tidy him up a little bit. Also, some of them are a bit shitty, you know, got you know dirty back ends because, well, because they have. And um, yeah, so I just wanna tidy him up a little bit, really. With ewe lambs, you've got two options. They get in lamb, if they don't, you can always sell them as lamb later on, and you end up selling them sort of this time of year, March time, and the trade's usually picked up a fair bit. So you have two options with them, um, which I also like. It's kind of a get out of jail for free, just in case you get in a bit of trouble. You can always cash a few of them in if they're not in lamb, so I like that idea as well. Hopefully it's gonna work out. I mean, I'm really happy with them. They're really big. I mean, they're, they're heli size, really. They're really well grown, so I'm not too worried about it. Hopefully you're able to see why we've chose to go down the whole coal you route that we've gone down to start farming and we don't have any land security or any money so when you're borrowing money that has to be paid back worst case scenario you can sell the coal use at a coal price also buying ewes that are going to straight away be negative equity just doesn't look appealing at all so that's the reason that we've done what we've done rightly or wrongly i'm not telling anyone how to farm or anything like that but this is just the way we've done it um if you're going to come on this youtube journey with me i just wanted you to all understand a little bit about why we choose to do it the way we do it um it's just basically because we it's the only way we could get started also if there's any sugar daddies out there or anything that want to send me like 100 grand so i can set up a proper farm hit me up sugar mummies too probably prefer a sugar mummy to be honest if a sugar mummy is a real thing if you uh, hit the subscribe button and the like button thanks for watching my youtube don't forget to subscribe thanks